Hello friends! I know what you're thinking, why the hell is Spooky Astronauts covering this film? Well, Monkey Man is an action thriller that I am very intrigued to check out today and I want you guys to come along with me. The film is Dev Patel's directorial debut. He not only co-wrote this film and directed, but he is the star. And everything I learn about this film gets me more and more intrigued. The storyline is about an anonymous young man who unleashes a campaign of vengeance against corrupt leaders. It's an R-rated film here in Australia and it got the Audience Award at the South by Southwest Film Festival where it premiered and got a standing ovation. The film is described as John Wick in Mumbai and it seems like Dev Patel did most of his own action sequences or stunts in this film. In fact, he broke his hand during the first action sequence in the film and due to the filming restraints at the time during the pandemic, he could not seek medical treatment right away but eventually he went to a hospital in Jakarta. In fact, this film was meant to be shot in India but was moved to a small island in Indonesia because of the pandemic. It seems like everything was working against this film getting done because not only did he sustain injuries to his hand, but he also got an eye infection. People say something about his shoulder happened. It was just, it seems like a complete mess. And the film was actually scheduled for a Netflix release, but Jordan Peele himself saw the film before it went to streaming and obtained the rights from Netflix through his company Monkey Paw. And now now he is working with Universal to give it a theatre release and we're getting it on time in Australia. I'm excited to see his directorial debut. I'm not usually one to seek out action films unless the subject matter actually interests me and this one does because I'm really keen to see what he has created and it seems like a very soulful movie which sounds strange given the description but I know he put a lot of heart into it and I've followed him ever since Skin so I'm excited to see what he's up to. He does not age at all. Let's go check out Monkey Man. I'll let you know whether it's worth your time and of course worth your dollar at the cinema or if you should wait until it's actually released on streaming and Jordan Peele was wrong. Let's go. <laughs> Hi friends, I just got out of Monkey Man. John Wick who? That was not a John Wick film. I'm sorry, I hate the comparison. It's so dumb to compare what I just saw to John Wick. They're both very different and I don't mind the first John Wick, believe it or not. <laughs> but I would not compare those two because it's a very different story. Just because something is a revenge action doesn't mean it's the same. There's a lot of revenge horror movies that I wouldn't compare to Monkey Man. I thought that was a gem. It truly was. It's a flawed gem. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it is definitely worth a watch. There was something very special happening there. So Monkey Man is about, it's a revenge story about vengeance. A man who is hellbent on trying to get justice uh, after something horrific happened in his childhood. And you see this kind of glimmer throughout his journey, but it is a journey film. If you haven't heard about me talking about journey films before, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it is a longer film that goes through different stages, sometimes over years. This one doesn't take place over years. And Actually, the pacing of this film is perhaps the strangest part. Let's start with that because that was a little bit of a negative for me, but in an interesting way because I really enjoyed, and I would put this film in kind of three sections with the setup, um, the middle, and then the end, the conclusion. I feel like they were all very interesting in their own right, but they were all stylized and paced completely differently. And they also carried different energy uh, and cinematography. Everything was uh, just a little bit different and I don't think it blended that well but I do understand why it was approached from a different uh, point of energy and pacing and 
feel. Like, it was good that they took you through all of those emotions, but I just don't think it transferred well into each other. For that reason, we'll get into the cinematography, but this film is so epic to, and I do think it should be seen in the big screen, and I feel like I'm very lucky that we got this in the cinema after everything it went through in production. But I felt like that this film might have even been better if it was either a a little bit longer so they could really pack out the middle and maybe join it up a little bit better to the other ends or if it was done as like a three-part not film but a three-part series and I don't want to put it back on the small screen but on something like Netflix where they really dedicated you know 50 minutes to each part and then it felt more like a completed journey because the story at its core it's not only a revenge story it is blended into a fable that is taught a mythological story um, that you learn at the start and at the premiere that I went to they had a video in Introduction by Dev who talked about how he was very connected to this story because it was something that his grandfather told him. And I really think that most fable journey stories, you know, films like Green Knight, which he happens to be into, uh, Lord of the Rings, things that, you know, you have to take a journey with the hero all the way through. They need time to really marinate so that you get that payoff at the end. And although the payoff in this film, guys you don't even know it's so good it just needed that extra marinated time to really sink in and be able to complete the arc in a satisfying way it is a satisfying ending but I feel like it just dipped a lot in the energy in the middle and it just didn't flow very well the film is so interesting because of the lack of dialogue I mean there is some dialogue in this film but it's not as dialogue heavy as I expected an action film of course usually isn't but I'm talking about when they're not fighting a lot of what is shown is inferred body language and kind of status from seeing him kind of climb into this world to try and take over and make a plan to get his revenge let's talk about the look of the film because this is a huge obviously a huge aspect and something that really sets it apart the set design I don't know how they moved this into another country. I'm so perplexed on how any of that happened. I understand there were so many production issues, but their scenes and the sets are so elaborate and so purposefully done, so detailed, so many extras. It is a condensed set. It's not a small, no room is small. All the locations are really grand and you can tell that there was a lot of effort put in. When I heard that he had so much problems, I assumed that it was gonna be a smaller set. No, it is packed, it is loud, um, and it is vast. I, so I th thought that was amazing. The cinematography is also another huge standout for this uh, in terms of the, the camera actual movement there's a lot of experimental style um, a lot of you know following close-up action I know obviously this happens a lot in action films but they really take it to another level in this one and I really enjoyed that I thought it was really immersive sometimes it's so quick you can't even understand what's going on which leads me into the point of the cinematography which I didn't like which was the grading this film like I said it had such elaborate and depth in each set that I was really disappointed by a fade that was kind of put uh, as a blanket across all of the scenes. I do have a theory for this. From what I understand is that they were really short staffed with equipment and I do think that maybe they put this across a lot of it so it matched but because it's such a lot of it is shot at night um, and it goes through all of these different crazy transitions through his journey I would have loved to see a little bit more grit and uh, contrast in a lot of that really black blacks of night and uh, all of the grittiness shown on camera um, and all of the night lights and the streets and because it was just a really full-on uh, elaborate set and a lot of it was exterior shots I just I didn't like how it was there was like a fade on there uh, I'm sure a lot of people won't have issues with that but it was just like a pet hate for me because it was so much was going on and I just don't know why you would want to take any detail out if anything I would have wanted to sharpen it <laughs> and take away um, from some of that haziness with that all being said 
There are some really fun surprises in the script and the way it's put together, which I didn't see coming. And I thought that was really fun and doing so in his own way, uh, setting up his style. It's not an average Hollywood film, which you would hope it wasn't, uh, but the way it's put together. So it definitely has that point of difference. But the gore, the gore, guys, the gore is, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It's gnarly. And part of the reason why I didn't want the fate on there, because it is gurgling, it's bubbling, and it's everywhere. And uh, it is, if you think that this film dips in the middle, which I believe it does, um, the energy really kind of lowers. Please just hold on tight because I promise it will deliver a gut punch at the end. And you, yeah, it's definitely worth it for that. I think all in all, this is a great action film. I think it loses its way in the middle a little bit because it wants to be a journey film, but it doesn't really set it up so it can have a proper meaningful moment of clarity for the hero. It kind of just gets there, does its thing, and then gets out, and I wanted it to be more emotional based in that moment. There's definitely a lot of good in this film, though, a lot of really nice surprises, and it's really a film about the underdog and uh, really important political issues in the country as well. I thought a lot of his personal story and revenge took a back seat to that, and I really admire uh, the, the focus of the film. I think that that was really unexpected and I actually personally I just love that journey. The film said so much with such a simple revenge story and not much dialogue so I thought that was really cool. It's just such a different feel and that's what we want. If you're worried that this film isn't like anything else in Hollywood, that's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing. But for a directorial debut, I hope this gets a lot of people excited and I really recommend supporting this in the cinema because it is worth it for that end sequence alone. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to see that on the big screen. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10 for the reasons that I said, the dip, the energy. It really does lull, but... I was really impressed with everything else and I really can't wait to see what is next for him. Originality, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. It is, you know, a straightforward uh, revenge story but told in a different way, so just a little bit above. And for scare slash gore, I'm going to have to give it like a, an 8. It is an R-rated film for a good reason, but there is a lot of sexual content as well, so be aware of that. Anyway, have you seen Monkey Man? Let me know what you thought down below. I would love to hear your feedback. Remember to keep it constructive, whether it's good or bad. Always constructive and always open here in the comments. Don't forget, I checked out The Omen already this week, so if you want to check out that video here, stay safe and stay spooky. Bye, friends.